All right, so I wanted to follow up with my last video and go over an approach I've been following since I watched a video that I'll include in the description below uh, that basically allows me to focus more on the high poly sculpt um, and then auto generating the low poly uh, in order to do high to low poly baking for maps and textures and texture generation. Um, I, this video just got me pretty jazzed to the point where I'm, I went and built two Houdini digital assets, uh, to help drive this behavior that, uh, I'm excited about. And so let me, let me show you what this looks like. And then, uh, maybe even demo, uh, demo what it looks like, and then maybe drill into the how of, of this in a later video. But what I've, what I've got here, what you see here is a, <clears throat> a character I've been working on. It's this paratrooper, it's like 56, 56 million points. Um, and what I've done is I have exported the individual objects that you see over here on the right, for instance, um, out into FBX files, and then have imported them into Houdini in order to generate low poly topology for about 90% of the uh, character. 90% of this guy is 100%. The low polys have been, you know, auto generated. There are some exceptions, like for instance, this, the head part. Um, if I just isolate that, that I retopologize uh, in order to have complete control. But many of these other major sections, and you can tell that it's, it's you know, it's kind of nasty, janky topology, but for the most part, it doesn't much matter until I get into some animation and I might have to tweak some of this. Um, again, this is, is an experiment at this point, um, but one that I'm kind of jazzed about uh, because, uh, you know, the ability to just focus on the high poly and then get into Houdini um, in order to generate all these low polys is, is, has been, pr has proven to be such a, a, a time saver. It's amazing without any loss of, of quality at the end, you know, so I will generate that. <clears throat> I'll throw it over into uh, marmoset to actually do the baking, the low, the high, the low poly baking. So clearly I'm not done. I'm still working on it. And then I'll punch that back over to substance where I will do further refinement and then feed it back into um, Marmoset. So let me show you a little bit more in detail what this looks like um, on this paratrooper. So what I generally do is I'll come in and I will start with uh, one HDA. But actually, let me back up just a, another second here and, and tell you what, you what you're seeing here. So you're seeing some subnetworks. Um, here, so like this jacket, for instance, if I go jump into that jacket, you'll see that this is built up of a number of uh, individual objects that all culminate into the jacket. Uh, and basically what you'll see is I've, I've got a mesh named jacket here. And if you go over to, uh, if I jump over to Marmoset, you'll see that I have a jacket object and that will create a a uh, high poly texture, uh, I'm sorry, a texture set that's also called jacket uh, that I will generate. So all of those objects culminate into kind of one paratrooper object, but named objects internally that I can use object IDs, etc., to help control the materials. Okay. Each of these p bits and pieces. So if I break this down even further, so here you've got combat suspender buckles and then the combat suspenders themselves and the clips etc this was all these this is the prepare for painter hda that i created okay and that that's how you deal with an individual object and then i created another hda to handle the merging essentially of all those objects it looks like a merge node down here um and basically that's where i can give it a final name generate out the high poly uh, and then, uh, you know, go back over to, to, uh, painter to do the job. Okay. All right. So let me show you kind of what this process looks like. Let me go into like, let's say the gloves. Okay. If I go again, back, everything starts over in ZBrush. So if I come over here, I've got the, the, the gloves, right? If I come over here, the gloves, what I, what I do is if you see the main gloves themselves have got hidden. You know, this is like a, almost a $2 million 
uh, two million dollar a two million poly object okay so with the first thing i do in in zbrush is i'll actually create a decimated version um just to make things a little easier uh on the computer etc so you'll see here the gloves i've decimated in, in zbrush pulled it down to 363,000 points right then i will export it so actually why don't we just do it i'll export just the selected I'll call it gloves. I'm going to do an FBX and I'm going to put this over into SQL slash temp. And then I'm going to call it gloves.fbx. Okay. So I'm just going to do selected. All oh, this looks good. Yada, 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 yada. So I generate out, write the data. Again, this is a, the high poly mesh, even though I have decimated it. This is definitely not a low poly. All right. So I went over there and did that. So now I will pop over to Houdini and I create my prepare for painter. So I've actually created a couple different HDAs under Arcanicom. Uh, and this one's called prepare for painter, right? And so the first thing it needs, of course, is a path to the FBX file, okay? Actually, let me do this. Let me uh, make this a little easier on you and I can bring the parameters up here so you can see it kind of in situ. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go find that file. Uh, that was uh, C colon slash temp gloves.fbx. And I'm going to bring that in and it's, and it's going to load here down here at the bottom. There we go. So <clears throat> what you'll see is got the wireframes on. There's the high poly mesh. Okay. Now the first thing that I'll do is I'll do very much like I did in, in ZBrush is I'm going to take an initial pass at this to say, okay, we need to reduce this right now. If you see down here, um, where my cursor is, like I was telling you in ZBrush, it's like 363,000 points. So the first thing I'm going to do is reduce more. So I'm going to take this down to, let's say 5% of that. So let's see what that looks like. And the whole idea here is try to get a low poly that, that matches the volume as much as possible with the high so that we can auto generate our maps. So, okay, that took it down to 18,000. Um, and let's, let's start there. So that's the first step is an initial reduction, taking it down to 5% of what it was. So we're now down to 18,000 points or so. Now here's the cool part. And this is the part that I pulled out of that video th that I showed down below, which is I want to retopologize based on curvature. So I'm going to enable curvature reduction and I'm going to visualize it. And so what you see here, the red is the convex, um, convexity, if you will, for the mesh and the green is the, is the concavity. And so what I'll do is a lot of times I'll just say use grayscale. And right now you, you kind of subtly see it as I amp this up though. So on the convexity, I'm going to amp this up and you'll see how the, the higher parts of the model are getting brighter. And you'll notice that C here, right? Okay. And I can do that even more on the, on the concavity too. I can bump that up, but for the most part, I found that messing with the, con uh, the convexity is all I really need to do. Okay. And once I kind of got that mass together, then I can say, all right, I want to reduce based on that mask. So I'm going to reduce the mesh, but I want to drive. I want to keep, it's kind of like adaptivity, um, in ZBrush where I want to keep a lot of the the resolution where that curvature, that con that uh, convexity was being had as an, as an example. So you'll notice here, as I drive this weight slider up, it will attempt to remove polys, but, but drive it towards those areas of convexity. Okay. And I can reduce even further, but still maintain those volumes which is kind of cool. So now I'm down to 5,000 polys or so. And then once I'm done with that, I can enable another pass of reduction. So this pass is again, just kind of doing a general reduction, right? Okay. So cool. So I can turn this off now. All right. That's great. So now let's, let's say I'm good with that I'm down to less than 3000 points down from 300 plus K. Great. But now you got UVs you got to deal with. Uh, in this particular case, I'm going to create some auto UVs. So I'm going to enable UV creation. And I have 
what you'll see is it's it's cooking right now and no, notice the green line so this green line are where the seams are okay and you know honestly this didn't do that bad of a job i mean this this seam here isn't ideal uh but it actually put some seams right up around the uh the fingers there which is great um so you know you could tweak this manipulate or show the visual distortion so red is where maybe it's a little pinched blue is where it's fine uh etc when you're manipulating these so let's let's say i tweak this a little bit i'm going to mess with the grain tolerance and see if i can get any kind of better utilization if i go higher you'll get some uh you know more islands um or i'm sorry less islands and so you got to find them the happy medium here uh so let's do that let me reduce it a little bit more the problem is if you keep reduce too much then you get too many islands so you kind of want to go with this okay so let's just go with that um and we're almost done here so now what you want to be able to do is again you want to keep the volume as close to the high paw as you can in order to not have bake errors so one thing that I did here is I want to be able to visualize this low poly with the high poly. And so I created this visualized high poly. All I'm doing is showing in the viewport both meshes at the same time. So you notice here, the high poly is kind of punching through here. This actually stuck to the volume pretty well, but I'm going to, I'm going to increase it just a bit. So let me take it up to 0 0.007. You know what? Let me do one more see how that's barely sticking through there that's pretty decent okay so now with that for this if i wanted to just bake this model i could go here and output the low poly so let's let's punch this out to c colon slash temp right and that should go to call this leather gloves okay so now i'm gonna go to c colon slash temp leather gloves underbar low and here I'm going to do the same thing except I'm going to go to C colon slash temp slash and that should yeah be leather gloves so I'm going to save to disk okay so now I'm going to save the the high okay great and so now I can go and open up marmoset and drag these two guys into marmoset now I'm going to create a baker I'm going to put the high in there I'm going to put the low in here and uh, at this point, I am in a good spot. So what I want to be able to do is I'm going to say, all right, I want to generate out uh, C colon slash temp. I want to call this leather gloves. Okay, that's where the temp and what I did for the uh, main, my main objects is I tend to say, okay, I'm going to create multiple texture sets, even though there's only one here. And then I'll configure the maps that I want. All right. So I'll take, I'll create a curvature map. Great. I'll take an ambient occlusion. I'm going to create an object ID. Um, and let's just go with that for now. Okay. Uh, and at this point, I've got my high and my low poly. And the reason I pull it into Marmoset is because Marmoset is so blazingly fast to bake. So if you click here and you look down here, it's done. So you know, there's my normal map. There's my curvature. And there you go. And then, I, you know, you generate that out and you push that over to Substance Painter and you're off and, off and running. But now what I can do is I can go over back over to the ZBrush, tweak it, bounce back over to Houdini and just auto-generate. Now, let's say that this, let's say the UVs, this is not what I wanted. I can save to disk the low and then come back over here to custom UVs and turn that on in order to go into something like a Ryzen UV, you know, basically a better layout, a UV layout if you want to. So I put that in there because I did do that. And actually uh, on the original gloves, um, that's exactly what I did do is if I, if you look at the real gloves, I went over to Ryzen and created the, those seams uh, a little bit better. Now, okay, so that was one, but you'll notice that in this subnet, I've got um, I've got three of those instances, those HDAs. I did it for the gloves themselves, the bucklets. I think I was supposed to be glove buckles, 
Uh, and then the glove ties. So the, the gloves on my character in ZBrush is actually made up of those three objects. These right here, um, and the and the buckles on the on those uh, straps, right? And so then what I do is I take those three, the outputs of those three, and I punch it into the next HDA, which is merged multiple game assets HDA. And all this is doing is it's giving me the ability to name the mesh of the final object here. So I just want to say gloves. I don't want to have gloves and then bucklets and then glove ties. Um, and I have the ability to output the low and the high poly. Um, and I can reduce the high poly even more. So right now I'm showing the uh, the high poly of all these things together. These three is about 464 um, points, right? And then I output. And what I wanted to be able to do is I wanted to be able to combine all these things so that I can have one big character. So all of those, so this is the gloves comes back out. And you notice that this is, I've got one output coming in, which is the low poly mesh. So if I jump back over here, the low poly output, even though I can output the high, um, all I need is the low coming out of all this. And that makes up the entire character, right? So then when I save this guy out with an FBX prop, then I just take the high polys. I've got high polys for each of these um, major objects and then bake from there, right? And this is this has saved me a ton of time. Um, now I haven't, you know, really put this through the paces. You know, I'll really know how well this works or not um, once I get through the animation phase. But even then, all it will mean is I'll come back over here and regenerate or retopologize uh, the parts that you know that um, that that I need to. I've got a lot of flexibility here. One other great benefit of this <laughs> that. I think I've just been uh, really happy about is that it normalizes where all of my files are. So the, the workflow starts with ZBrush and I'll generate out the objects in ZBrush into a known location. And in fact, I kind of baked it into my HDA. You'll notice here it says paratrooper FBX. I've created a package.json um, so that this will expand to this particular directory, that's where all of my FBXs go. And that's where I'll go looking every time I, want, I need to create a prepare for, H, for um, painter. And I'll go looking for there. So that right, right away, okay, where are my original source FBXs? Okay, boom, right there, paratrooper FBX, great. Then the next step is, all right, generate out the uh, high poly uh, or the low poly if I need to. And therein that I then generate out and I've built this into uh, the the multiple the merge multiple game assets is all right, that's going to go into the painter source as a low and a high. So that's where painter will look for it. And this has been a really great mechanism because now I don't have to think about where all these assets are going as I tweak them here and there. Uh, and uh, that really came in handy recently because I had to move a bunch of things around on different disks and it, everything just worked. So I think what I'll do is I'll go into detail uh, next time in terms of how how these HDAs work um, uh, and, and provide the HDAs. Let me know if you're interested in these HDAs and whether or not you want to give this a shot. Uh, again, this is all experimental right now. I'm just doing a bunch of R&D on this, but I'm pretty excited about this approach. Um, and I think it's going to work, but <laughs> only time will tell. All right. All right. Thanks a lot. Talk to you soon.